Hey folks, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I am Gillian here, the bearded bombshell of the Scottish drag scene. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13, Episode 10, and the Makeover Challenge. Wow, how unexpected was it that they were going to do a Makeover Challenge this season, considering all the restrictions? I was thinking maybe they could have done like the film crew like they did before, I can't remember what season that was, maybe Season 9, I think? Nevertheless, I think this is a great opportunity to really change it up and have the queens paint each other and dress each other. Strange concept. Did it work out? Did it not? Let's get into it. First team duo up we have is Rosie and Tina Burner. And Rosie in this 50s housewife into stripper aesthetic, I wouldn't have liked on Tina and I don't like it on Rosé. Just such an unsuccessful look. I do like the campy nature of the housewife, very Stepford wife, big huge mass of hair and of course the traditional Tina Burner red and then this kitsch massive housewife 50s dress in an ugly pattern, doesn't really go with the hair, doesn't go with the reveal either. Yeah and just I like the silhouette and I love the hair, I will say that, but then they reveal it into this leopard print, is it red trim on it? That would be cute for a dance number, but the reveal itself, they didn't really play into it that much. Um, it just wasn't planned out very well, unfortunately, and that's something I think if they were going to do that, again, just have more intention with it what's the theme okay so i'm going from housewife to stripper right i'm gonna get horse crop or like something crazy ball gag something to amp it up a little bit more this wasn't amped up enough to make the reveal make sense thus it is a hag and then we have tina burner and rosé's look and of course now rosé is in massive pink hair traditional rosé style which i really kind of liked it but I didn't like it either. The look itself was very basic but it could have been there's limited things in their wardrobes that they could get to fit each other properly. Yeah the dress was just very basic. I did like the zip ties on the sleeve. They worked really well with the print that was on the dress um, but the dress just wasn't anything special. Like what was the character, what was the concept that she was using this dress for in the first place? It's nice and I think it'd be great for a dance number, but unfortunately for the makeup challenge, mm, I'm not sold on this. And for me, it's a hag. Next duo up we have is Olivia Lux and Denali, and this is a kind of mixed bag of who did well and who didn't. So Olivia is of course wearing Denali's kind of signature braid that we've already seen her in from the start of the season and uh, that big long blonde braid and then this cute very cute blue I don't know if it's a top and skirt I think it's separate I can't remember from the episode but it looks beautiful it really pinches her silhouette in a great way that Denali does quite often has the large fur billowiness at the top and on the bottom of the skirt and it has a really pinched in tailored silhouette to make her waist look really tiny and we've seen that in a lot in Denali and I think this look was totally her. You could see her in it as soon as she walked out. I thought this was fantastic, it was a total gag. Whereas Denali didn't really look like Olivia. Like when they were saying this could be any queen, it literally could be any queen doing glamour. You know, it wasn't necessarily screaming at Olivia in any particular way. And in her confessionals, when they lip sync at the end, spoilers, um, Denali's like, I'm in the bottom because of what my partner did. But was there any point that Denali could have said, I don't know if this is your signature. I don't know if this immediately reads as Olivia, you know? find something that makes you unique and particular, especially like things like Gottmik and her white face that she does for Candy, if it were me, I would have like a big twirly moustache, you know, I, like the makeup would have been very particular. So what was Olivia's signatures that she could have done on Denali? I know she's done some really great glamour looks and I see why they went in that direction, but it just obviously didn't work out in the end. 
So unfortunately, that's a hack. Our next team is Simone and Utica. And this pair, I was actually personally most excited for. I couldn't wait to see what they were gonna do because I think they are two ends of the fashion spectrum. Like, Simone is very high fashion and artistic in that way, creating concepts in terms of fashion and its context in the modern era, how she creates social, social messages in her drag. That is very Simone. Whereas Utica is very kind of artsy, historian, in fashion, like bringing that to a new level. And they're two total opposite ends. Um, and I relate to those kind of styles in different ways. I think they're both brilliant, but for totally different reasons. First up we have is Simone in Utica's look. And let's be real, that cake part is obviously just you could cut a hole in the blanket and then run seams down the sides and that's about it and the message that she was trying to say in the workroom I don't particularly get in the look weird combination with the cape and then you've got that flesh suit underneath that you get a sneak peek as she walks and you've got this kind of crazy flowery headpiece that goes into the makeup really well the makeup was beautiful I actually that was something I really liked on Simone it was very different but very Utica and looked great it was fantastic I loved that makeup she always does great detailed makeup but the look oh it was very strange I actually really love the headpiece and I wish that went more into the outfit like have that maybe on the legs or like draping a little bit more down that shawl that she had yeah, for me, the look's a hag, but I like parts of the concept. Whereas what Utica was wearing as Simone was fantastic. Now the reference for this is BAP's Black American Princess is a film from 1997. I've not seen this film personally, but I did briefly just look it up there. And it looks like the look that Simone had created um, is a look inspired by Halle Berry's character in the film. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna go watch that film because it looks quite interesting. I love the fashion from it and it's pretty much a direct look. The hair is a replica of Halle Berry's hair in the film. So I'm very interested in the fashion of this film and kind of the context of it. So I'd love to watch it and kind of get a bit more of an understanding from that. However, the look on Utica looks ah oh, so incredible. And I would have loved to have seen this on Simone as well. But I love how we're kind of getting this conversation about appropriation on Drag Race. You know, I understand Utica's reservations in terms of wearing black styles. Um, we had it with her Bob Ross look where she didn't wear the afro, she wore a squirrel headpiece despite the fact that he has an afro. There are some white people that have an afro. It's just understanding the context, the reference, the culture and the history of those pieces. And then she has the reservations of doing this BAPS look and Simone's saying, you know, I think it will make a great statement. RuPaul's saying it's great and she's still saying, I have reservations. Like, if black people are in the room and they're telling you, this is good, we can do it, it'll look great, it'll be phenomenal, go for it. It's like, but I, I, I get a lot of people are kind of hung up on their reservations and how she might want to just be a little bit more careful, um, especially given everything that's going on. They filmed this right I believe it was like in July or August, so really straight after everything that happened with George Floyd in June and all the protests that were building and building up. Uh, so it was, it was really a cultural moment where I can understand where she's like, I don't know if this is maybe too soon, but in the end, this look was fantastic. And I'm so glad Utica just let go, just went with the flow and it really was a look and you know she really kind of nailed Simone's look on the runway in terms of characterization. She didn't go funny, she didn't bring those Utica-isms that she always is playing around on the stage. She was a fashion model and I would like to see if she maybe merges that in with her character and you know has those funny isms that she always has but she's got that body, she's got the fashion as well sometimes to really be a model on the stage. Not to say that she's to change, like we love her as she is, but I think this was such a great night for both Simone and Utica. And that look was a total gag. 
And last up we have is Gormick and Candy Muse. Gormick is wearing this kind of punky look going on with the whole head to toe look in one. So there's the flame kind of biker hat, flame leather jacket, this airbrushed bodysuit which looks great and it's great that it still worked when it's fitted in because sometimes can have, those can have like patterns very specific uh, to how it all works together but no it looked great on her. I wouldn't say it's necessarily exceptional but I like particularly like how all the pieces work together. They were very harmonious and she was going wild on the stage as well which I absolutely loved. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best thing I've ever seen on Drag Race but it was a head to toe piece and had me fairly gagged. Then we have Candy Muse as Gottmik, and this was incredible. The obviously signature paint with the white face, not the whole white face, but the from the, like it was like the lips up, wasn't it? Looked great. And then the whole black and white clown outfit seemed like a very elevated version of Bob the Drag Queen's black and white runway, where he did a black and white clown which I thought was fantastic very harlequin but again monochrome black and white and the look was just fantastic and then the odd socks well looked great of course having the nipples out and those little black and not nipple tassels but nipple pasties uh, it looked fantastic looked so great very kind of got mixed signatures are all in there you know the nipple pasties the makeup the style in general was very gothic, and I absolutely love the look. And then as well, the hair as well, being that lime, oh, bright lime green, oh, beautiful neon green, yellow, whatever it was, matching the makeup is actually, again a very gothic signature of the white face, but then a bright color to really make an impact and go wow. This look was wow, and a gag. And that is it for the week. Unfortunately, we're saying goodbye to Denali this week. I really feel she had more to show and it's such unfortunate that she had to go. And yeah, she, maybe she was landing the bottom two because of what Olivia had for her. But I think she had the opportunity to say, there's something more iconic, there's more Olivia that we could bring to this look. And it's maybe she did say that, maybe she didn't. I'm not too sure. But it is what it is, and unfortunately, we're having to say goodbye. Gaggy's gag this week, it has to be Utica's look as Simone. Simone's look for Utica. However you want to say it, it was stunning. That Baps look was brilliant. And uh, again, Simone just brings the best fashion to the drag race stage. She has such great references as well. It makes me want to research more of her references than I have for other queens and their references. I'm not really getting them, so I really want to go watch this Baps film. And a highlight was definitely Got Mix look on Candy Muse. That was a really good look as well. Let me know in the comments down below who had your gaggiest gag for this week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button down below, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you want to check out more of me, make sure to check me out on all social media at Julianne here. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye, folks.